Welcome to our F1 2024 US Grand Prix reaction. I'm Sagan and I'm joining once again by Captain AGX. Um, I'm, I'm very good. How are you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We may have a bit, uh, but. <laughs> Well, who cares? We can ask. Uh, we can always ask the question. It's a matter. Okay. Um, U.S. Grand Prix. A very exciting Grand Prix that I was very excited for even before. Well, during the predictions themselves. And uh, yeah, I think it delivered uh, as a weekend. It was it was pretty good. Yeah, it's, uh, I guess we can move straight to the bridge, uh, straight to the, our predictions so we can react to them and talk about the weekend as it goes on. I guess start with the sprint, uh, sprint qualifying. Uh, also, also, we had only one practice session since it's a sprint weekend. It looked pretty interesting. Uh, I think we had Ferrari stopping the practice session. Uh, definitely not a team that I expected to... Well, be that quick in practice, uh, let alone uh, later in the weekend. Um, yeah, very good uh, looking Ferrari, and Max was also up there. Um, Chico was struggling a little bit uh, as well as McLaren's. Uh, Mercedes cars really struggling with their balance. Uh, they were sli sliding all over the place and just, just not looking comfortable in their cars. And yeah, all the other teams pretty much were the are meant to be, right? <laughs> okay. Spring qualifying. Um, we had the two medium sessions and the one softer session. Well, uh, starting with SQ1. Um, anything memorable there? It's, uh, I think I remember mostly from qualifying, just not from the spring one, because it just, uh, it's, it's confusing a little bit. So many sessions. Uh, S <laughs> Peter Kai, I just <laughs> I get uh, but it's an important if you remember the spring ball fight against only thing that matters there is like full position. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the that's the thing. SQ one uh Piastri Piastri was out in the P sixteen or P seventeen may have been. Um he got his lap time deleted. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was. Uh, he, he had to spin the 360 in the second last turn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the one Williams out. The other one got into SQ2. But they are SQ3, but we'll get to that. Um, yeah, that's, that's SQ1 uh, behind us. Um, I feel, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, that's like Salvers getting knocked out in SQ1. That's not, <laughs> that's, what, that's very interesting. Uh, SQ2. Did we have anything there? Uh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's pretty much what would we expect at this point. Um, obviously, Red Bull brought an upgrade to this weekend. Uh, I thought that would be pretty quick. Turn out, Turns out uh, only one of them was. Uh, as Perez was pretty much when they, when they left him. I, I think he also didn't have as many updated parts on this car, like Max. Uh, may have been just an excuse, or whoever knows, because no one confirmed it 
other than Perez. So, uh, yeah, no. Uh, yeah, uh, out in SQ2 for Perez, um, well, it's, it's the usual stuff. Uh, but SQ3, we had some interesting uh, drivers there because Magnussen outqualified Hulkenberg, I think, uh, going to SQ3. No, 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 that was skill flying, sorry. Uh, SQ3, we had both passes in SQ3. Um, Colapinto, I think Sunoda as well, right? That's the that's the six cars because, uh, sorry, this is four cars because six cars, obviously the top four teams. We have two other drivers missing already with Piastri and Perez. Um, yeah, we have Max Verstappen pole position. In front of George Russell. Yeah, who was who was the yellow flag? I think it's Colapinto, right? I think he made a mistake in the SQ3. Yeah, because he finished in P10, despite being well. I, I think he could have qualified at least one Haas. Uh, to be fair, the Haases were very quick, especially in the sprint qualifying. Hulkenberg P6, three and a half tenths off pole position. That's very damn impressive. <laughs> And uh, Magnuson also P8, like both Haskers in the top top eight in SQ3 uh, already looking very good for my most impressive team. Uh, <laughs> and a good mention, uh, important to mention also Yuki Tsunoda up there uh, in SQ3 as well. Because, yeah, the, those two teams are fighting for the P6 and the Strengthers. Obviously, this weekend uh, changed the order a little bit. As uh, yeah, every point is important for those teams, and you know, as we will see in the sprint, uh, huge changes can happen from just a couple of points. Um, yeah, uh, from SQ3, yeah, obviously, Max, incredible lap, pole position, uh, his first pole position, I think, uh, since whatever Austria. <laughs> oh, actually, it was Belgium, but uh, Belgium in the rain, but it got. Yeah, he lost it to Charles because of the penalty, which is also stupid, but uh, yeah, whatever. Um, it's been a long time so we ha since we had Max topping a qualifying session. Uh, impressive from Red Bull, at least uh, one, on the one side of his garage. Um, and looking good for Max uh, in his title fight, because five races at the point and three sprint races left. Uh, 52 points it was before between Lando and Max uh, before a sprint race. It was a very important pole position and good for him. Um, on the other side, Lando only P3 or P4, was it? Uh, can't exactly remember. I think it was second row. Yeah, it was P4. Uh, P3 must have been uh, like the Ferrari, yeah, Charles probably, yeah, they're right. Um, McLaren's didn't have the qualifying speed this weekend as well as Ferrari's. Uh, it was odd to see because those two cars were pretty much topping every qualifying session ever since uh, the well, the summer break ended. Uh, we had also always had a uh, McLaren or Ferraris at the top of qualifying. This time we had Max uh, quite convincingly beating both teams. Uh, George Russell was pretty close on this first lap. I have no idea where that lap time came from. I am um, Maybe Mercedes actually found something in spring qualifying and just quite, didn't quite manage to do that with Lewis. It was a strange session overall. I think Mercedes cars also had only one one tire, like only one lap, and the other, all the other teams had two runs. Maybe, or maybe I don't remember correctly. Anyways, um, yeah, I think we mentioned everything needed for a, ski, uh, for a straight qualifying. For the sprint, though, um, we line up with Max Paul in church next to him and his title rival in P4. So, let's start. 
pau. Max. Uh, yeah, Max, Max, obviously, Max, yeah, uh, Lando start alright, just made, maybe made, made positions in, in, on turn one, back to them going wide. Help Lando just get over George uh, uh, on the exit of turn one, uh, then obviously we had Norris behind, uh, behind Verstappen, but that fight didn't happen uh, at least at the start. George dropped a P3, later on fought with the Ferraris, who, I mean, the Ferraris were fighting so much during the sprint race. <laughs> they legit could have had a double in the sprint, I think, if they wouldn't fight each other that much. Uh, yeah. Which is good in short because Yeah. Yeah, I, I think actually thought that during the sprint race that maybe the Ferraris didn't fight each other that much. Maybe they could have challenged Max. Turns uh, turned out I was right during the race, but that's a little bit of a spoiler. Obviously, everyone listening and uh, hearing this already knows the results. But yeah, nonetheless, uh, sprint race uh, was won by Max Verstappen. Uh, I forgot to assign the points. Uh, I quickly changed that. No points for the sprint qualifying pole. But I get a point for Max winning the sprint. Which is, I mean, I was I was very confident in the prediction as well. I, uh, Max really, really knows how to drive into sprints, uh, sprint weekends, and he won every single sprint this this year, even uh, even this one. So uh, I think I'm. I think I'm gonna stick with Max for the sprint races uh, as we we get to the next few races as well. Uh, there's one in uh, in Vegas, I think, or no, but there's one in Qatar and there's one in Brazil. So that's uh, the safe pick there. Uh, P2 Lando couldn't manage to. Well, actually, no, 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 no. Lando fell behind Sainz in the end because of that. Uh, he did. He fell behind. Well, well he didn't match to keep up with Max uh, race pace uh, during that sprint and then fell behind the Ferraris which were very quick that's correct yeah you're right it probably maybe could have finished ahead of science but at mean, that one point probably doesn't matter when Max is winning anyway uh, must have been in the huge bowl blow for uh, Norris mentality especially like after winning Singapore so dominantly, your Tyler Arnold is suddenly in front of you and you cannot do anything uh, to stop that. Uh, especially with the, the Ferraris behind him. I think Legend Ferrari should have got a 1 2 in every single session, like uh, every single race session uh, when it comes to that. Um, Yeah. Final hopes. Uh, and Max, personally, for me, was the favorite for the title 
ever since the first race of the season, and that hasn't changed. Uh, even during the more Tom and McLaren races, I still fought and Max has this in the back. Is he just always, still, almost always maximizes his weekend and always is up there despite the Cardinal being as quick. This is one of those weekends. Max didn't have the fastest car, at least uh, in terms of race pace, maybe in qualifying pace. It was the fastest car, but in the race pace, it definitely wasn't. And he got a sprint victory and a, and a podium in the race. Uh, I think he maximizes weekend pretty well, uh, cause especially considering it's such a, it was such an important weekend for a title fight. And yeah, uh, yeah, ma Max, <laughs> yeah, nice one. Um, yeah, P three was Lando, P four uh, Charles, and uh, we had P five George Russell, I think. Yeah, yeah, there were. Yeah, um, Hamilton and John Russell, both of them look very slow in, in, in race pace. Uh, we had the Hasses actually uh, behind Perez. I think Perez finished in P6 in the end, probably. Uh, no, 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 actually, it was, I think it has double points with Yuki in the points as well, in the sprint. I think Yuki scored points in the sprint. I, I, I may be wrong. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, Magnus is 7th, so that means Perez was 6th. Okay, okay, I was correct for the first time. Oh. What was the what, who was six? Oh, Hamilton. <laughs> Sorry. Oh my gosh. So many results. It's so difficult to remember. Uh, okay. Um, uh, yeah, half, half double points, meaning they overtook uh, Toroso in the constructor championship and are holding P6 in the constructors like the first, first time since, well, 2022. Obviously, they had it in the start of the season. They were P3, but. Discounting good starts for the season, it was like 2018, the last time they had such a decent season uh, in the midfield. Considering the Astons, uh, they started really well, they were on the on part of Mercedes, then fell off as they brought upgrades because every single upgrade for Aston Martin, even this weekend, they, they, they brought such a massive upgrade package to the, to the car and Aston became even slower. It's such a... I don't know how they do it, but every time they bring upgrades, they just make it so slower. They just uh, they just shouldn't bring upgrades at this point. It just doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. See, oh, it's a 20.6 as well. Uh, important, uh, important season for Aston with Honda. Uh -huh. Yeah, good job. Good job, Haas. Uh, we move to qualifying. For the U.S. Grand Prix, I think I had we had an exit for Lewis Hamilton Q1. Um, he did he did he make a mistake? I think he he made a mistake on his second run, which meant that he didn't finish it and went out. Or maybe I'm incorrect. Yeah. Yeah, Russell somehow made it into into Q3, but I don't, I don't know what happens with the Mercedes. Every single weekend, they they looked either they either look very very quick or just the opposite of the spectrum, just <laughs> nowhere to be seen. And it varies between sessions, not just weekends. Uh, like they can be quick in the session, and uh, a few hours later in the next session, they could be just one of the slowest cars. It's just so confusing. Uh, another team that brought a lot of upgrades as well, Mercedes. Um, this was McLaren's also a team that brought a lot of upgrades. I think every single team which brought upgrades somehow became slower. The Ferraris brought none and somehow uh, got a very decent result. <laughs> to say the least. Uh, 
Yep. Uh, back to. Yeah, uh, next pull flying. Um, no other, I think, important exits. Maybe hook in, in Q2, but uh, I mean, the midfield is so tight at that point. Uh, Magnus qualifying hook is a shock, but it's still not something that is un super unrealistic. Magnus had a really good weekend. He he out qualified hook I think, in the, in, in the spring quality. Or, no, 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 he didn't. Uh, sorry, he outraced him. He finished ahead, and Helkerberg then for, uh, qualified ahead. But in qualifying as well, Magnussen uh, qualified Helkerberg in the main qualifying. Magnussen had a very good weekend. I like, definitely one of the most impressive drivers considering his um, his normal weekend uh, performance. Uh, that's nowhere near the level of Helkerberg. This this time, it's they're on par, if if not. On the more on the side of Magnuson, uh, all, all in favor of Magnuson, I should say. Um, so yeah, getting to S. Uh, sorry, I think Q three. I keep saying S Qs. It's confusing. Sorry, uh, Q three. The the final shootout of the ten fastest drivers and qualifying. We had Lando putting on provisional pole position for the first run. Uh, Max. Yeah, it, it was it was a very good lap. Somehow, extraordinary that performance out of McLaren that I didn't know it had because legit McLaren legit looked so slow in qualifying pace. Like you know, not super slow, you know, not the sauber level, of, but compared to their usual uh, comfortable pole position pace, uh, this was very uh, just untypical. Not uh, just not McLaren like and. Lionel somehow managed to get a P1 uh, for uh, or is it provisional full position uh, PS3 only but P5 at that point. Max just behind him, uh, a couple of thousands actually. It was very close in both uh, SQ3 and Q3. Um, so we had the Ferraris up there. Uh, George wasn't that quick. Uh, Perez was slow as well. I think he finished in P10 in this uh, to the end of the session. Uh, Magnussen, interesting pace. Uh, qualify like P8 or P7, maybe. I think actually it was P8 because Gasly somehow got into Q3 and finished P7. So, uh, very good performance from him. Uh, then we had obviously Lawson in uh, Q3 as well, uh, who knocked out, uh, I think. Uh, Perez, right? Or was it Tsunoda? Maybe I'm yeah. wrong. I think that was yeah, that was the sprint uh, that I'm talking about. So I, oh, it's so confusing. <laughs> okay, um, forget what I happened. Lo yeah, yeah. Lawson wasn't in Q wasn't in Q3 because he he got the uh, had to start from P19. So he uh, he tried to give Tsunoda. This, this this slipstream, but it didn't work out just uh, quite just well. Uh, Alonso, though, was in Q3, and it was the last driver that I haven't mentioned, uh, apart from obviously uh, Max and Lando. Well, I mentioned them, uh, to be fair. Okay, um, the main topic uh, they got the first runs in, uh, uh, up to the second bunch of runs, uh, George Russell crashes. Red flags the session and no one gets to set another lap time, giving Lando the pole position for the United States Grand Prix. Max, I think it was it, it was on pace for a really good lap. He, I think he had a purple sector one and he was like in the middle of sector two when the red flag came out. So unlucky for him. Was still a P two right next to uh, your title rival is uh, good damage limitation technically. And yeah, uh, Mercedes didn't have the pace as in SQ3, so uh, Russell behind the Ferraris, Piastri was in the, in the P5 in the end. Sainz actually, I think, uh, qualified Charles, so start, Sainz started in uh, P3 and Charles in P4. Mm, yeah, Gasly P7, Magnus at P8. Uh, P6, 
who was P6? George Russell? Yeah, well, George Russell's P6. Uh, P9 was Alonso. And Perez plus P10, then. Uh, that was probably the order. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I, I, you're right. You're right, obviously. Uh, Hamilton started from the back. George also from the pit lane. Or he looked. Okay. Yeah, Liam, Liam got out in FQ2 because he couldn't manage to get that spread stream for us. You know, that Indian start last because he had uh, like 60 please place grid penalty <laughs> yeah yeah it, it was yeah <laughs> um I should assign wins first. Uh, Norris and I think actually got three points to Charles and P4. So you were you were right. We <laughs> uh, were saying that I got a lot of points. I actually did. You got a point for Norris full position as well. Good, good job. Uh, and uh, okay, that's four to one. Uh, Already uh, <laughs> looking very good for me. Um, but yeah, let's get to the race because uh, a little bit limited on time. Um, okay. Mentioned the important ones. Uh, Russell starting from the pit lane, Hamilton from the back, and uh, Lawson from the back as well. Well, at the start, Max Verstappen doing Max Verstappen things. Uh, dive bombs and lap to Norris to turn one. Unfortunately, it looks like we need the extra ball prediction point. Uh, both went wide. Max just managed to just managed to keep it on track. Lando went off the track thanks to Max squeezing him out on the exit. Just uh, the average Max dive bump uh, that you would expect in a title fight. We saw that so many times in 2021 and also in uh, 2022 a little bit. Um, Max just does these things. He knows the rules and he knows what to do at the start. It worked for him. He got a lot of Lando, uh, but the driver that got a lot of both. Charles Leclerc. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, so there's another incident between those two, but uh, I'll say it. I'll say it like this. It wasn't penalized, so it technically wasn't legal. But unless they make the rules that prevent this, Max is gonna do this over and over again. So as long as it's not penalized, it's technically legal. And as much as I don't like drivers pushing each other off track just to get in position, it's not penalized. So. I mean, it's it's the FIS issue. It's not Max. Max is just abusing the rules as they are right now. Uh, also, the lap one incidents aren't taken as as much into consideration when it comes to penalties. They're just uh, handled differently than the race uh, incidents. I just didn't like the move, but also when you, when you think about it, Max when did everything right uh, on his part because uh, he he knew he would not be penalized for it, at least uh, not harshly, like 5 cycle penalty would still be all fine for him, but since it was a lap 1 incident, similar to, to the one in Vegas last year with Charles but I think Max keeping on the track just a little bit, uh, maybe not getting the penalty in my opinion um, and that's that's pretty much my opinion, so I also want to mention that Charles Leclerc going from P4 and P to P1 in one turn, epic wow <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah, signings also started well, uh, but got caught up, caught up in the incident and only Object Lando actually challenged Max uh, for a little bit um, before before the undercut uh, that was later in the race. But I think you want to express your opinion as well about the incident, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, was yeah he he got so many positions right he uh, he got like. Yeah, album album went over the curb, like the curb itself, the inside one that's a little bit bumpy. But George, I think George lost the rear end. But when Lewis went into the corner, he already was like uh, he he car already looked unstable when in the entry and in the exit, just completely spinning out to the gravel. It was so weird, but also. Very unfortunate for Lewis, but that, yeah, that car is, must be hard to drive, as we saw in practice and uh, in the rest of the weekend. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Indeed. I quickly want to mention one more thing about the start. Uh, Albon uh, collecting Ocon on, on turn one. I think that incident also helped Lewis get a little, little, little positions because uh, uh, Ocon had to, had to spin. Well, not that he had to spin around, but he was forced to, forced to spin around by Albon uh, punching into him, and Albon obviously got caught up in uh, in that as well. I think Colapinto made some positions thanks to that, as well as Lewis. Uh, Obviously, uh, that, that incident for it was important for Colapinto as well as uh, Lawson in the end. Like all those free drivers uh, were helped by that, but Lewis, uh, I think, had the most memorable start of them all. Yeah, uh, back to that, those dive bombs that we saw throughout the entire weekend. They are uh, Russell on Bottas. Uh, uh, this, this is difficult because when we had a very similar. Uh, very similar incident uh, later on between the title rivals. Uh, like, I get it, the penalty, but also so it was so marginal that I, it, it was unfortunate for George. But I think it was the deserved penalty thanks to the corner being so tight on the exit. That if it was a little bit, it was, that was that was a little bit more tarmac instead of the curb. Uh, the white line is very tight on the exit. And it's very difficult to basically go around the outside or uh, like stick it on the inside without pressing the other driver off, as we'll obviously talk about later on. Uh, I, I think George had a deserved penalty, but I have a, I have a, I have a different opinion about the the other one, uh, the other incident. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
when they actually get to the to perform it. Um, you know, which is kind of right. But um, yeah, I just I think Paul is a silly. I would have. I don't know. I personally don't have. Okay, l l okay. If if there wasn't the the entire incident of Max Vlan, though, would you think differently about the Russell penalty? Let's let's imagine it wasn't. It didn't happen. Like it was just solely the Russell Bottas incident. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. It was very tight, but also, in my opinion, uh, pretty much deserved penalty. It was it was harsh, but also, also on the limit. And unfortunately, that's what happens. But in the other incident, yeah. He. Yeah. Yeah. He he beat Perez while starting from the pit lane, also with a five second time penalty. <laughs> that. I mean, I mean, I, this looks this looks impressive for Russell, but it also looks so so bad for Perez, like, I mean, especially on a weekend where Lawson came in and, I mean, his race was also very impressive. Um, yeah, not, not a good look for Perez, but that's what we've been saying for uh, two years now, pretty much. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, let me get back to the incident uh, between Lando and Max. What's my issue here? I think it, the, those incidents with Russell and uh, Bottas uh, and, and that one, they're very similar, as you said. And I think I agree. If, if it would pan out differently, if Lando wouldn't overtake off the track, if, if it would stay... like uh, If he was forced off the track, that's there's no doubt about that. If he would slot behind Max and drive behind him basically he would have overtaken him later on probably uh, considering the pace that McLaren had I mean, he pulled uh, like a 5 second gap almost to Max in the end like it was 1 second between them um, if Lando wouldn't overtake off the track he would have stayed behind Max I think Lando wouldn't get a penalty obviously but I think Max would have gotten the penalty that's the difference. And what's stupid about this entire thing, in my opinion, is why didn't Max get a penalty as well? If you're getting a, a penalty to Lando for overtaking off the track, you have to give a penalty to Max as well for forcing him off the track, just like Russell did. Like, like one crime isn't overriding the other. I think. Just both of them were at fault for the entire incident. Yeah, exactly. He's he's using the he's using the rules so well. Yep, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> such a, there was such a similar incident. That was almost copy paste incident, just in a different corner, like that Brazil one. Yes. Yeah.
It is. Yeah, as long as the rules allow Max to drive like this, he's gonna do it. He's gonna exploit every single rule there is. And it's just how Max does it. Like, he knows the rule book, he knows what he's allowed to and what he's not allowed to do. Uh, he pushes the limit and he went away with it. And it's not, not even mentioning the incredible defense that he pulled before the incident itself. Like, Max, Max maximizes this weekend so much. He, he couldn't have scored more points. Uh, I, I think I think just couldn't have. But it was Ferraris were untouchable in the race, and uh, that podium arguably should have went to uh, maybe even Piastri or Norris, uh, depending on how do you how do you look at it? Because like uh, remember, Piastri was in the end very close to Lando. He he had to slow down. Like his team told Piastri to slow down because Lando had a penalty, but imagine if Max had the penalty as well. Max would drive behind Lando and they would need Oscar to be close enough to Verstappen as well to uh, be inside that five second penalty. That would actually like uh, challenge Norris maybe, perhaps. You never know. Probably wouldn't because Piastri has to not challenge Norris's points at this point of the season in the championship. But still, that was a risk, and I think a McLaren should have finished on the podium in this race. Max did it instead. He used every single thing that was available to him, and he did it. Uh, he outscored Norris in both sessions that, that were granting points this weekend. I think he's going to win the championship based on this weekend. I, I have no doubts. I, I would literally belt all my savings that Max is going to win this title. Just don't believe there's any other chance uh, of Lando or even Charles opening him. <sighs> wow, <laughs> uh, I, I went off a little bit there. <laughs> uh. All right, uh, I, I was, we should mention the other other bits that happened in the race. As we mentioned the Perez and the Russell one, uh, Ferraris getting one two. It was such a such a weekend. Like everyone was focusing on Lando and and Max. That like I almost forgot Ferraris were leading one two and pr quite comfortably as, as well. Like Charles was in the end like eight seconds ahead of Science, who was also uh, quite a bit ahead of Lando. Oh, sorry, uh, Max in the end. Yeah, I <laughs> wow. Uh, Ferrari one two. Not the result I expected in the in any stretch of imagination. Good job, good job. Just a uh, very quick, quick car on race day. I, I was very impressed. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah, Round out the other points paying positions. Uh, P7 Perez, obviously not the greatest drive ever, but I mean, what what more do you expect from Perez at this point of his career? I think he's, he's probably not going to be there next season, let's be real. Like, especially with La Lawson being this impressive. I think it's, it's Perez's time and maybe maybe just maybe mexican grand prix there were some rumors about his retirement uh, during this grand prix or maybe even back to those rumors uh, during the summer break that perez keeps his seat only thanks to the ticket sales at the mexican grand prix maybe we could see some announcement after this grand prix but i wouldn't bet on anything but there's also a possibility because it's red bull i kind of forgot their uh their antics with their drivers um, P8, Hulkenberg, another great drive. Uh, 
get another good amount of points um, and a good weekend from Haas. Just, uh, I was not happy with Magnussen stopping again. I think he could have managed to get at P9 or maybe P10 in the end uh, by staying out. Uh, I don't think that was a good strategy of not that well managed from Haas, but still a P8 and P11. But the only team that could be comparable in terms of impressiveness probably Ferrari. Um, but uh, uh, P9, I think it was Lawson, right? Yeah, P19 to P9 in his first race back after a year out in a car that he didn't know. What more do you want from him? I think that was, that was the best performance he could have put there. Logic, uh, like, uh, I, I think he's going to be another Red Bull. Uh, I think he's not, probably not going to be this year, but next year for sure. He's, he's, he's just going to, if, if he keeps this up, uh, these performances for the rest of the season, I think it's a it's a simple solution. Perez out, Lawson in, and they probably will bring maybe Colapinto or Hajar to the other seat uh, next to Zenoda. Uh, speaking about Colapinto, P10, another point for Colapinto. Wow, <laughs> what, is this, what is this dude doing? Like, he just destroyed Alba this weekend. How, how is he doing it? Like, he has like five points, right? Already from his four races in that Williams. And I think Alex is like 12. Imagine if Colapinto overtakes Alba in the championship. Like, if there's a crazy race and Colapinto somehow gets to like a P6 or P5, like those those races happen. And if that happens, that's a 10 or 8 point swing that could very well match to uh, get Colapinto ahead of Alba. And, that would be a very difficult decision for Williams uh, to basically leave out such a driver because they cannot get rid of Albon or Sainz for next year unless they basically screw bo either of them up. I don't think they are getting rid of Sainz, uh, especially Sainz is in a very good form right now. He just got a P2 and a, and a P2 in both sprint and, and the main race. Um, Albon not in the greatest form of his, of, his, uh, of his career, but it would still feel probably uh, unfair to him. But I think Toroso will have to get him to the next seat. Getting Perez out, lost in the Red Bull. I think Colapinto to Toroso is very, very likely for next season. Uh, okay, um, that's the points being positions. I think no, nothing much other than that. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Nothing really much. I mean, Gasly was screwed up by the strategy a little bit uh, during the race, starting for P7, finish like P12. But that's about it. Um, yeah. Um, that's a Grand Prix. Fastest lap was Ocon. Ocon, who. Thank you. Yeah. Colapinto. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine Colapinto with the fast slab, so that would be amazing. <laughs> Unfortunately, it didn't happen, and we get no points for this one. Uh, yeah. Least impressive team. Uh, Mercedes? Aston Martin, maybe? I don't know. Uh, Definitely not one of our teams. I mean, both were impressive at some stage of the of the of the weekend. Uh, Gasly with a P seven in the qualifying, and uh, they scored points. I think in uh, in both sessions, or maybe in, not in the sprint, but lost and got to P nine. I think that, that's not the least impressive team. Uh, yeah, I think this goes to Mercedes. Honestly, like maybe McLaren could be considering. The, the pace they had in Singapore, but also they should have finished, uh, well, P3 and P4 on pure pace if they would have matched their weekend better um, overall. Yeah, just, just Mercedes, in my opinion. Yeah. Late impressive driver. This is, I think, Lewis Hamilton. 
I, I, I don't know if there's any other, any other tribe that would give it to. Maybe Alex, but I uh, don't know. Yeah. He, yeah, he got beaten by Russell on the circuit that he, well, arguably, this, yeah, that's, that's, that's about it, but still, it was a, was a very, very uncharacteristic weekend of Lewis Hamilton, he just, especially on such a circuit that he always finished in the top five, I think, in, in, the, in his entire career, never qualified out of the top five on the circuit, just, this is one of those circuits that you always can count on for Lewis, but it just didn't. It was wasn't there the weekend. Um, very strange. Russell and Alonso, I mean, both of them had some good moments. I don't think those are. Actually, I mean, he got, he got the key free in that car, and that's still some achievement. Uh, most impressive team. Now, I stand by my opinion. I think Haas should take this over Ferrari. Considering all the context, I think I think Haas should take this. Is there home Grand Prix, special livery, upgrades there and there, all all for this Grand Prix, and they managed to score three times uh, if we're counting all all the all the positions. Both in the points in the sprint, uh, Hulkenberg best of the rest in the, in the race. But a huge shout out to Ferrari for being so quick on uh, in race pace. Not quite qualifying pace, but in race pace they were very quick. And maybe if they would have been a, a quick as well in qualifying, got a pole position, led for the entire race. So maybe I would look at it differently, but I think Haas had a more complete weekend. Just the one, just the one thing that I would just say that it didn't do well it was came back strategy in the race, but maybe that was his decision as well. I don't know. Uh, we'll probably never know. I think Haas takes the takes this one. Um, most impressive driver. Most impressive driver over the entire weekend. I, I would say we have like four or five drivers that this could legit go to uh, legitimately, I think. <sighs> what would I give it to bias aside? Yeah, L Liam, Liam and Franco had great drives on Sunday. Uh, not quite a memorable form from the spring. He, yeah, he made like six positions from P16 to P10. Yep. Okay, uh, I... Okay, I see that you didn't even mention Max, and I want to know your reasoning. Uh, Uh, 
being purely Alright, I think I think I'm gonna lose a point here then. Um uh, Yeah I think he's the driver that fully maximize this weekend. That's the thing that I already mentioned. But I mean I think about it, George also did that technically. <laughs> Charles maybe uh, all right, all right. I already, uh, already uh, up, up, up by three, so I guess I uh, can leave this one uh, to George Russell. Should have finished B three. I mean, he literally finished B three instead of B four when he should have probably finished. Only, only thanks to his, well, defensive driving and knowing the rule book. I mean, <laughs> he he did everything perfectly. I, I think that was one of Max's best weekends this season. If I'm being honest, like. He was better in a better car, but this this car this car isn't the best car in the, <laughs> out there. Uh, I kind of imagine a weekend where Max would get <laughs> most of driver at this point. Did maybe we did? That also was like the weekend where we had no other driver performing as well. Maybe Norris, but he also made those mistakes in the race. Uh, you know what? Okay, I'll just move on. Uh, yeah. Five to two is still great. Uh, there are no points for actual prediction this time. Lawson finished in P nine, so the DNF didn't happen. And Norris did what Norris does the best and lost positions on lap one from pole position. Yeah, uh, and you were saying that my position, my my prediction is like pretty pretty unlikely. It's pretty unlikely that ha actually like. You remember uh, what you were saying, right? Especially when 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 I counted both uh, both the face and uh, the sprint. I actually didn't believe my my prediction, my own prediction, and it, it turned out to be wrong because Lando is Lando. Right? <laughs> this prediction actually is pretty bold when I think about it, and it didn't get any points. So I guess I'm just proving my point. Uh, all right. Uh, U.S. Grand Prix, uh, very good circuit, very good race, very good sprint, just a very good weekend, uh, very inter entertaining uh, from many perspectives. Maybe if we would have had that fight for P1, it would be a little bit more exciting, but I I'm still happy with the Charles Leclerc win, as I always am, and uh, Ferrari went too, may bring some spice into the constructors as well. Perhaps if Ferrari actually can maintain this form, uh, maybe they could challenge McLaren, uh, especially if Piastri has these weekends where he just cannot match Norris in pace. 
I think PS3 had an ex- extremely invisible weekend. I, it was like he had one of those Joe weekends or Bottas weekends where you just don't see him. He exited in SQ1 and almost like if no one cared, no one, like no one said that he he had a bad performance because no one, no one mentioned him. No one mentioned that SQ1 exit was just weird, uh, so invisible. And the race in the qualifying, just you, you didn't see him. The only time it was mentioned was with the with, with the time penalty. So uh, that's about it. Um, and well, what are our last or final thoughts for for this recording? It's Mexican Grand Prix. Um, you know, who knows? Uh, not the greatest circuit out there, but this season, this season has been. Well, pretty interesting even on those boring circuits. Uh, Excluding Monaco, which obviously was only exciting thanks to the result. But at the time, it was very, it was much more exciting than it would be in this time. If Charles would lead the entire race, it wouldn't feel as as epic as in Monaco, for example. So, yeah. Uh, okay, that's it for for this Grand Prix uh, reaction. Uh, thanks everyone who's been. Hearing us, listening to us, uh, waffling about our favorite sport. Well, maybe not your most favorite, but definitely mine. Uh, <laughs> um, is here. All right, all right. Uh, I, I thought you also liked football a lot. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, well, Formula One is my favorite sport. Uh, the second favorite is, is hockey. Uh, I also made some videos on this channel, but. Uh, I'm not into creating uh, regular content on that basis um, or for that type of content. Anyways, uh, I'll, at the end of the video, uh, I wish you all a great weekend for Mexican Grand Prix. We will have, uh, we do the predictions as well. Um, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, we'll be on that in a few minutes. So thanks everyone and bye. Dude.